Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk about all things Commander. And today we have an episode that's been years in the making. Uh, the Sword of X and Y tier list. Wizards recently finally finished a 10-card cycle in March of the Machine with the Blue-Black Sword. Uh, so we are going to rank all the swords today, all 10 swords. But before we do that, uh, let's introduce you to our co-hosts. We have Tomer, Budget Commander. How are you doing? I am doing great. I've been so hyped for this particular podcast. It's been years in the making, decades in the making, and I got my swords ready for them. Because I have a, oh, yeah, I have a, six, I have an, what happened to the other four, Tomer? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. Wait, they're wait, not, they're not that all. Tile? That that was not allowed. No, no. I mean, these are the X and Ys. Other we obviously sort of Cauldra is is S plus here, but luckily uh, we're not rating that one, or else it would it would have dominated the conversation. I think <laughs> it would have made these these look like nothing, honestly. But all right, Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. <clears throat> How's it going? It's going well. Excited to uh, <clears throat> hear some horrible sword opinions from the rest of the, the crew. <laughs> are, are you, do, you, do you have feedback going back from your mic into your headphones? <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, no. oh, oh, the burn. Damn, Richard starting off with the hot right. We're going we're gonna to have to wrap and, uh, that up. cackling is the Asian adventure. Krim, how are you doing, Krim? Yo, I'm excited, kind of after like, like after what happened over the weekend. But yeah, it's fun. How you doing? All right. So uh, before we get into it, make sure you give us a like, follow, or subscribe on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. We're on all the podcast platforms and YouTube as well. And a reminder that today's show is brought to you by Card Conduit, the easiest way to sell your magic cards. Card Conduit lets you skip all the typing, time, and work associated with buy listing. Their curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with buy list value one or more, and you pay just a 5% service fee. And you can also use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards and only pay 2%. You get a detailed report and fast payment once your order is processed, and you can get 10% off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mtggoldfish. Uh, so thank you to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's show. Uh, you know, maybe you have some trash Question. swords that you could Question. send into them. <laughs> Richard, did you did you just say sorted yes, <laughs> option? Yes, like, yes. Uh, you, you, uh, if you, if you uh, can take sorted, all your swords sorted? and sword them and then send them in <laughs> for only 2%. So, mm. all right. We are going to... So, we are going to go in order of basically worst sword to best sword. Uh, <laughs> loosely, because our opinions do not all align. Uh, but, uh, so normally we rank, you know, S to D... And, and for this for for this list, uh, Seth and Tomer decided to add some f bombs in here. So we're going to start with that because they are very strongly opinionated on this sword. And we're going to start off with Sword of Body and Mind, the Crim Special. Uh, so all the swords are three mana to cast. They cost two to equip. They give you plus two plus two and protection from two colors and give you two effects. So Body and Mind gives you protection from green and blue. And uh, when you hit a player. You can make a 2-2 green wolf token, and that player mills 10 cards into their graveyard. Now, uh, Seth and Tomer gave this card an F. <laughs> Not even on the list. Krim <laughs> at S+. Plus. Uh, he really wow. likes this, and I, I gave it a C. I gave it a C. So let's hear from the the, the, the F brothers here. Why, why is this card literally, you're saying, the worst sword ever printed? It's not even close. Though. It's like... It's absolutely the worst because this is the only sword that actively helps your opponents because so many uh, decks in Commander have a recursion suite. Some of them more than others, like any white deck is going to be running Sun Titan, for example. But then there's one of the most popular archetypes is like graveyard decks or any black deck basically loves having stuff in their graveyard and either reanimating them or putting them back to their hand. So this is the only sword where actually hitting your opponents might actually be helping them more than it's helping you. And that's that's wild. That's 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 an accomplishment for for this sword over all the all the other ones at least help you more than it helps your opponents. You can say that pretty confidently. This is the only one where it's like if I have anything to do with my graveyard, I want you to hit me over this. 
I mean, I, I I was gonna say the same thing. It's the only sword that has an ability that is often a negative rather than a positive. It has like a drawback. One of its two abilities is a drawback. I would also add like beyond that, that's the big reason, but it also has pretty bad protection colors. Like protection from blue is like the worst protection color, I would say. And then green, I guess, is fine for attacking through bodies on the battlefield, but not really great against removal. Uh, the wolf is, I guess, something, but even the wolf, a 2-2, we see all the time in Commander, people playing off beasts within generous gifts. A 2-2 token is not an actual like scary threat or legitimate reason to like the card. So I don't see any, I would rank this by far the, the bottom sword on the list and it's not even like close. I think of it as kind of in a league of its own. It's in its own category. And then you have the other nine swords that are part of the cycle. I agree. It is on a league of its own. <laughs> and there's the rest of the other swords. Nice. Well put, Seth. I think you meant you put the wrong rating. You meant to put S plus because I've heard you all just spew nothing but nonsense in the last 30 <laughs> seconds all right congratulations because i want to say that the most popular commanders have blue or green in them if you go over the past two years the most popular commanders that you'll see on the average table have blue or green in them yes there's black and red uh and all of that but for the most part the protection colors are solid and on top of that milling you know what's the best thing? Even people who want to do have do graveyard stuff don't want everything in the graveyard. And in a format of singletons, I love it. I'll play that gamble. I'll play that gamble. Plus, this way, it's unassuming enough to where oftentimes that sword, people will let you equip. All of a sudden, things start spiraling out of control. And then all you do is you look at them in the eye and you let them know there are two wolves inside me and they are body and mind. That's it. That's uh, because this Correction, is only one wolf. It only makes one wolf. If it was no, two no, wolves, no, no, maybe no, no, I'd no. be interested no, no, in no, it. No, no, no. no, no. It <laughs> only one needs wolf. one wolf because the other wolf is the thing you're equipped to. <laughs> you are going at like, I'm not just the stat season from this commander clash. Let it be known. Of the permanents on the board, Tomer had to remove Sword of Body and Mind. I just want you to know that Tomer treated it as an Avengers-level threat. If no one cared, why? And if every if it actively benefits people, why does everybody remove it? It did. I mean, like, the triggered it, ability didn't matter. Let, let the record show. Like, that situation was, I was dead to a swing. And the protection actually matters. We don't. We don't. But that's part of the card. You gotta take. But that's always part of the card. That's true. I would be more afraid of literally any other sword on that one. It just so happened that like even the worst version still gets me. Sinew and steel. Sinew and steel. Like like like. That's so bad. Who cares, right? No, no, it wouldn't have been. We'll get to sinew and steel, but but like I'm just saying the mill plan in a format of singletons. Where you were like, yeah, there's a recursion game plan, but always, obviously, if I'm playing this sword, I'm not out here going and just going willy nilly. Like, oh, sure. No plan B in case I mill something bad. Obviously, there's a plan B. In a singleton format, if I'm able to eat up your cards, oh, God, if I eat it up with a Dothy Voidwalker out on the board. Yeah. There's so much that allows yeah. me to, to do. I think it's advantage. actually on to something. So I, I used to meme on the milling aspect because, you know, if, if you mill a card into the graveyard, uh, you know, you could think of it as literally doing nothing because that card could have been on the bottom of your library, which you, you never would have, would have drawn, right? Sure. Except we are in a singleton format where people play tutors. So there is a real world where you mill an important piece into the graveyard. For example, a cauldra piece. And you're saying, but Richard... We plan for that. We have we have graveyard recursion. But again, you have like what? One to two pieces of graveyard recursion in your deck? It's not the same as the number of tutors or card draw you run. So the milling is not as much as a meme as we like to make it out to be. I think there's actually some real effects, but it was never a meme. Wait, we were memeing the, on it? Even if the card is like complete trash, it has a purpose in a mill deck. Like if you play a mill deck, you want to mill your opponents. The sword is good, whereas there are swords where there's like literally no case in which it's good. It just does like mediocre things in well, all like, archetypes. So I think the sword like gets a bump above that because in a mill deck, the sword is doing work for you. I think right? I would I, run it in like archetype where it does something. <laughs> I would run it in I'm, a single deck, basically rogues, right? Because rogues want evasion, protection helps yeah. with that. 
They want to be attacking, so the combat trigger dovetails nicely with that. And they want to be milling, because they actually use the opponent's graveyards for stuff. So yes, I would run it in a rogue deck. But like, how many decks are there that actually <laughs> want to use... on a crab use... and go to town? Like, any yeah, rogue deck on a crab? It. Well, but, but yeah. hear me out. Even, even <laughs> yeah, like, legitimately, you ever swing with a crab? Rune crab has hands, okay? Now, I know Seth looks like he's but about to pass mil, out from how deck, much... <laughs> this is, like, is even... Uh, I even... <laughs> I, mil deck should do so much better than this. I'm they, it's true, though. I'm blown away by the, like, milling arguments. Like... It's well, random. If you're, if the you're whole a mill idea, deck, like, you don't aren't play we the mill sword? Well, no, I was going back before that, but like milling oh. your opponent doesn't have value. The idea that oh, I'm gonna mill their good card. We're like going to back to like <laughs> but Seth, you can hypothetically mill their combo here, piece. Like, you can mill them into their combo piece. Like, yeah. yeah, it's random. It's yeah, Seth, have you have ever random. sweated yes. when Krim busts out the sword of body by? You're like, oh, please don't hit me. <laughs> like for the love of God, like, don't hit me because your four card combo. Like if you lose a piece, it's like really bad for you. <laughs> But when yeah, you but just then like, I take a deep breath and I'm like, oh, I'm a logical human being. That's not how randomness yeah. works. <laughs> yeah. I'd be, I'd be but, ten times more afraid of Krim playing something that was good, like an exile removal spell that got rid of my combo piece when I played it on the battlefield, right? If it's in the graveyard, yes. then who cares? The best like counter spell. I think it's worth something. It's worth a C. <laughs> it's not an A or no, S. The, it's but like a what little if, like, effect. What what if I'm like a playing any sort of graveyard deck, which there's like a a don't, diamond. Don't it's not even black, player, right? Like don't hit the graveyard. But player. every every deck has oh. recursion, so you're you have an option that's terrible, and then you have lesser terrible <laughs> options that are still bad for you. Wait, to, wait, 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 wait. Before you say that, yeah, every deck has recursion, but every deck also has graveyard hate. Sure. So the thing here is, I am hopefully. Hitting you and then bogging you. I'm hopefully able hitting you while there's a rip out in play. So now you need a good I card like to card mitigate the So you need the your threat. sword to be a two card no, combo. No, 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 no. I think that defeats the but purpose. Even, you have, it's not even to be good it, to mitigate the downside of milling people. You have to be like, oh, I hope downside. I have a Jukabog or else I'm helping my opponents. That's but terrible. A in a format of singletons, I will gladly play this game of chicken. Right? That's like, like, we play that's this like game saying, of chicken. That's like and saying if you I'm, have a card that gives your opponents five cards each turn, you're like, well, I hope I hit my windfall because then it's going to be great for me. <laughs> it's like, well, but I mean, even, how about even, you just don't give them the cards in the first place? Don't mill them in the first place. But in a format of singletons, I am a okay with t- playing that race without graveyard hate too. Like, let's play this game. Will you get there with me milling you your combo? I imagine more times than not, which it's already proven, like at least. Obviously tested and by, like anecdotal, right? But the thing here is, I have jammed sort of body and mind in so many decks just as a meme for the fun of it. Even ones that aren't mill decks. If I am attacking, I have it. My Dragon Lord Ojutai, it's been pretty darn fun. And the protection of the colors again has proven to be time and time and again solid. Way better than people think because the best bodies are green. Right? Yeah. And like and on top of it, like the best cards that like you're gonna see creatures Ojutai wise. Flies. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, but the thing is in the air, like it may fly, but the thing is there's you, so you many things all that those can reach block creatures. That. <laughs> you I, can. You uh, actually can. Okay, I, so I, I, I will throw that this is the only sword that makes a body. <laughs> so if your original sword bearer dies because the protection sure. colors are inadequate. <laughs> You don't get a body because you don't get the you didn't make the hit. But if you make a hit and somehow <laughs> lose the spot removal, you get a second wolf to equip with. Um, That's because they know I'm that hitting your loop. opponents is a draw is a drawback. It's a trap. You might have the loop. Look, <laughs> if we were doing scars of Mirrodin draft, I would I would put this I would put this at near the top, maybe the very Limited, top yeah. actually. That's like a that's a three hit kill. Maybe, oh, well, sometimes four, but like it's a three hit kill. That's very good. And has blockers. Wow. But I, like, okay, in well, Commander, though. Come okay, on. okay. I, I, I get that I, you I guys don't like the sword, but I don't believe you guys like it worse than some of these other swords we're going to talk about. I will about. figure it out. I, 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 I will say one thing before we move on <laughs> on this, because I am going to say that it is called Sword of Body and Mind, and it seems that Seth and Tomer haven't opened their mind's eye yet. <laughs> to the truth that is the I, sword of body. I, I, I got I got a checkmate before we move on. Uh, I was just looking back on <clears throat> Crim's commander decks. I found two mill decks that were played in the last year of Commander Clash. 
zero swords of body in mine in either of the decks titled mill so Wow. This, yeah, whoa, 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 hold on. In, in, in Commander? Jingataxius, Tyrant Product, uh, Jingataxius from like November 2022, and also Lord Xander okay. the Collector. So oh, I'm well, But Lord Xander, Lord Xander Mill is about cloning. So my, my question I, you know, is, years. my question is, even in the context of mill decks, isn't it true that a lot of mill decks just don't play enough creatures for sort of body in mind? Like, I feel like not only do you need to be a mill deck, but then you also need to be a pretty like specific kind of mill deck that has enough creatures to play a sword because a lot of mill decks are like pretty spell heavy, right? And pretty light on creatures. <laughs> So you equip the oh, rogues. Look, look, Again, look, rogues are look at <laughs> look at my stats from this season. We have yeah. what is my most played artifact from this season? I, I, I will Probably say I did the stats course. for Clash, and I saw six body in mind. Oh right. my god! Oh in, my in god! So he, he he backs up what he's saying. He played no, but he also played he played Osgir Mill too. Which oh so 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 it worked right yeah but like, Osgir almost never does out, Osgir mill it's usually self mill and this one can it even target yourself can it no, no but yeah. I don't why would I want to do that I'm, I'm, oh no yeah. so yeah no garbage no but then where where else is <laughs> no, if you can no, target no, no, yourself no, no. I would actually be kind of excited for that I thought maybe no, there was a secret what? tech here. Because I the mill player also know that even if I'm milling I there's cards I don't want to mill. Right? And even with <laughs> recursion. So, what? look, I'm just saying, the card has been sweet. What is your real grade, Karim? I still haven't figured out if this has all been like a three-year-long troll to support <laughs> Sword of Body is, and Mind. Is it better than Sword of Cauldra? Can you tell me I that? Don't, I don't play swords. This one okay. has a cool watermark, so how I about don't, that? Uh, Does that okay, add Tomer, to the... That's that's just some mill fodder. I don't know why you keep showing that. Like that's just that's mill fodder. So it's, I'm very happy that it's you have probably mill fodder. your legitimate most played sword, but you don't really play it a lot of swords. It is my most played sword. Okay, I can yeah. I can accept it that. It is that my makes, most played sword. He doesn't that own sense. a rogue deck, so, so I mean, so it's but, but I, no, 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 no. But where, where do you rank it in the tiers of swords? Do you actually rank like, it as one of the best swords, or like an average sword, or like a a bad sword? It is the best sword to me because it's the only sword I play. Okay. What if you tried to step outside I, yourself though and like be unbiased <laughs> by play pattern? Like <laughs> it is a tier list. It is impossible on a podcast in a tier list podcast. There, you can try to be as objective as you I, want I like to sound. But to his but, guns. Yeah. Yeah. what if the goal is to win and not I'm the meme? Sticking I'm sticking to my sword, okay. <laughs> like uh, my sword. He's gonna fall. Guns. He's gonna fall on his sword. All right. I'm we gonna gotta... fall on this sword. I will die on this hill. <laughs> so I, I put it I at love the it. bottom tier of swords, yeah. but it's the best one of the bottom tier of swords. Yeah, we'll get to overall hmm. ranking. So we're, we're going to talk about you'll, the, you'll, the bottom tier understand. swords right now because I'm surprised you guys put some of these other bottom tier swords over the body of mind. This is, and uh, this we'll is go straight to the new sword once in future. Uh, just printed last set. Uh, I gotta read it because no one knows what it does. It's black and blue. When you hit someone, surveil two, then cast an instant or sorcery with mana value two or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. And then if it would go to a graveyard, exile it. Uh, so everyone gave it D's except for Tomer, who gave it a C. So Tomer feels Tomer, it's remotely really? playable. Really, Tomer? Yeah. Yeah. Better than body of mind? Please. Really? Yes. Yes, because it can actually be good in some deck. But, okay, so body of mind, the main problem with body of mind and why I rank it lower than everything there are no is because problems. it actively helps your opponent. At least this okay. one. At, at the very least, I don't have to feel scared to hit my opponent with this, right? Because at the very least, it's going to surveil for me and it's not going to surveil for my opponent. So, um, where would I run this? playing a reanimator deck in the reanimator well, graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but sure. But more I'm likely I'm going to be using my own, yeah, my own graveyard better than my opponents, hopefully. So, uh, there's also like 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 Krim, uh there is a there's a deck for anything and this one actually has multiple <laughs> decks, I think. Well, well, well fit. Like for example, I, uh... one of my pet equipment decks, Tetsuo Imperial Champion, loves low-cost spells because he can cheat them into play with his equipments and whatnot when he's attacking. 
uh, the Tetsuo Imperial uh, Champion. Really, really good for that. And there's also other decks that just like run a lot of low cost spells, like the suspend spells, if they have any ways of casting them for free, like Myra or uh, Yidris, for example, or just like decks that f- full of like ponders and just like cheap spells, like even Dralnu, Toshiro, uh, Umazawa is another one. Anything that has a high concentration of them, like let's say like 15 or so of them. Uh, this is going to actually have a lot of value to it because it's a repeatable Snapcaster effect. Tomer, Tomer, I want, I, I've played against your deck numerous times. That's that Toshiro deck. Yes. I literally played it last week. Yeah. I want you to know that your deck, if you put this sword in there, it is actively making your deck worse. Why? Because, because <laughs> <laughs> I look, the surveil, very cute. You're going to pay three mana, then pay two more to equip it to do is to hit and surveil. Tomer, what? most of the su- you're only using the surveil half because- But the, then I get the to cast half- the instant, or, or an instant or sorcery for my graveyard too. Tomer. The deck you, has full of you, them. Tomer, Tomer, yes, you're right. Your deck is full of them. I know there's no way, my man, you are sitting out here and not knowing the mana cost of your own spells. I saw oh, everything hi. in that deck. It's three to four plus. Well, this only casts you, two or less, except you, for like Knight's Whisper. You're gonna get me to check my. <laughs> Look at your own deck list. You're trying to cheat them into play, but then I, you have this other sword that requires you to have right. lower costs. We're, we're gonna look. I'm right. gonna look at my surveil. Thing. Okay, but Krim, Surve- is I'm gonna tell you with how the body many. of mind. <laughs> okay, oh, 100 percent better three, with body of mind. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, Seth, 10, let's 10, have a 11. rational conversation. Here. Yeah, so I mean, at D. So. So I have this uh, the sword at D because I think it's very hard to use. I think its abilities aren't horrible. I think making it sound like, oh, a repeatable Snapcaster is bad. That's silly. Repeatable Snapcaster is obviously good. The problem is you need to have a very, very specific deck where you have enough creatures to make a sword work, enough cheap spells to make the Snapcaster, like restricted Snapcaster ability work, and there is just not a lot. Like, I think it's possible Tomer's Tetsuku deck is one of the decks that can do it. But I think <laughs> you're, you're, Tetsuo. you're like Tetsuo. You're like counting on like one hand yeah. the number of decks that can actually meet the criteria of enough creatures and enough spells to make the sword work. Maybe there's some like, uh, maybe the new like Brawl and Carries have. It's like spell slingery and it makes Ragavans that you can put the sword on. Like, there might be some very narrow circumstances. So I think it's like a fine effect. There's just very, very few decks that can actually take advantage of the effects. Is so that not a C? At the bottom. Because at least it's not no. actively harmful to your, your thing. And How by the way, that? my Tashira, I just counted it, 19 spells. But okay. it can, it can okay. flashback. It can flashback 20, but one of them's Imp's Mischief, and that doesn't really work. Um, right. So, 19 so, spells. Okay? So That's even, let, let's, let, the game that we played, I saw nothing but three plus spells, but even, let's just say Tetsuo, right? Let, let's say the, exclu- the, the exception is Tetsuo. Or the Seth special Tetsuko. Yeah. <laughs> like Tetsuko. The, the, uh, the point is, though, there are way less decks that can use once in future. There is such a fine line for you to, like, use this sword. Whereas Body and Mind, where you think it is, again, harming you, I don't think it is hard or helping your opponents at all. I, I, I just, okay, outside of, like, maybe the Golgari, <laughs> like, the whatever... The uh, Golgari Grave Troll dot deck, like sure, maybe maybe the Dredge deck is probably your worst matchup, right? Or any but, land deck or Ozgear, you know. I just, haven't. I I honestly maybe even a Chantress is a thousand ways to <laughs> not mass, even. I animate okay all, all your all enchantments. I, I play ball against all of those. Really? I play this game of ball against okay. all of those. But the Dredge deck, no. Okay, I'll I'll take my L there. Maybe we don't hit the the dredge deck. So like the 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 sort of once in future though, it is way too narrow and way too many deck building restrictions. And on top of that, the decks that are doing that, why would they want a sword? Why would they want that sword? I mean, you want to like, share the free spell, but deck, it's also five mana and like it's multiple it's not combats. a free spell. Yeah. So the yeah, the power exactly. of the sword is like kind of <laughs> capped, right? Because at most you're getting. A card and two mana and a surveil two, so mm-hmm. the the power level is kind of capped. Like even in the you know you actually get a tutor if you have like a full graveyard, but it's a lot for five mana. So I don't particularly like it. And I think personally, I think there are more mill decks for a body and mind sword than there are decks that can utilize this particular combination of stuff and to like good use. Like you don't want to like a lot of mill fire decks. off like a go for the throat on some random 
stuff, right? You actually want to like have your spell be effective as well, right? So the snares for it are pretty hard. I'm surprised Wizards printed this as the last sword. It feels underwhelming. Even if we go with the very generous Tomer ranking of C, still pretty bad, right? Like, it's like on I, the lower half I liked, of swords. I liked, I liked Crimsmore. I feel like we would have we had a better a better design first. Do, to be honest, yeah. Do you think it's just designed for sixty card formats? Because it does seem like efficient spells to me feels like something that you would think of in sixty card formats. Yeah, that's, like like there's no there's yeah. no like maybe maybe fire and ice and like one off. Like, yeah. like you know a one off right in feast and famine. But like if this is sixty card formats, what format is this good in? Right, like. Maybe maybe where brainstorm exists, but in Standard? a in, let's just say stone blade, right? Like why would stone blade play this, right? Stone blade has better things to be doing, right? So even and in standard, like Lord knows that <laughs> I'm not playing this card, that's for sure. <laughs> like, yeah. All right. Speaking of standard, I have a good standard sword for you that I recall seeing play in standard. Uh, sword okay. of war and peace. So war and peace is red and white. When you hit someone, it deals damage to that player equal to the number of cards in their hand, and you gain life for each card in your hand. Uh, this, D's for everyone, this. C for Seth. So Seth thinks this is playable. I'm okay. Well, I'm getting why well, y'all like hate life this. How is this so a C? Man, like, this is you're Commander, just... though. We're talking about Commander here. But like, in co- so if you think about it, in Commander, like. Everyone has full hands pretty much all the time. Like, this is giving your creature protection from white targeted removal, red targeted removal. Those are two, like, heavy removal colors. Dodging red sweepers like Blasphemous Act and whatnot. And then it's turning your creature into a, like, I hit you for 10 and I gain 7. Like, I, I don't think, to me, this feels like a perfectly average sword. Like, you, any deck that has enough creatures to support a sword, you could throw this in it. And I think it's going to be fine. It's not exciting. But to me, it's like many steps above once in the future and body in mind as far as like it doesn't do something super exciting but everything it does is just like fine like i like some incidental life gain in my decks the protection colors are fine hitting you for more damage is never a bad thing i actually think it's kind of like underrated in commander personally okay so, i'll give sword of wep it's uh <laughs> it's no. it's roses it's flowers no. right? i don't understand what you're talking about tomer don't be weird okay <laughs> like sword of wep is uh it was great in standard it's like this is the 1v1 like sword right 20 life yada 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 40 life 40 life and i'll be honest with you even if they had a full hand let's just say seven wow this is not great <laughs> like this really does nothing and the best case scenario is like somebody does reliquary tower and has 40 cards okay sure but then they have 40 <laughs> cards i just don't you probably i don't see them where they have 40 cards in hand <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i just don't understand how this is better this has to be even worse than once in future this is <laughs> the worst sword in commander right I mean, I people play... The, the ceiling is even worse, right? It's like you, you gain, say, five life. You deal five damage. At least once in future, you can, like, cast a brainstorm, get your bomb, and, like, do something useful. I'll, like, there, there's, like, surveil. actual upside. This one is just, like, more damage, but at the cost of five it's, mana. But it's... Right? Like, at like, the cost of five mana, you deal, like, a little bit more damage. Unless there's a combo deck to fill someone's hand. And then, like, one shot, though. It, it feels... Very I, mediocre. Uh, wouldn't this wouldn't that be an argument against like Black Blade Reforged and Ember Cleave and like any equipment that's just like, no, hey, no, my no, thing no, is dealing no, more no. damage now. Like I'm yeah, I'm confused why costs, dealing like, more damage is bad. <laughs> and is not <laughs> those, conditional in the same sense, right? This only costs two mana to damage. equip. It actually well, it costs has. less to equip. Yeah. Like, what, commander, uh, this is like me paying for a shock. Right, like I'm do, I'm paying five mana for a shock in what is commander, but like like black blade reforged, ember cleave. No, 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 Seth. Those are closers. <laughs> Those are closers. This yeah. is not a closer. I think it's more the commander damage aspect. Well, sort of war and peace doesn't doesn't work well with your commander because like black blade reforged, you slap that on a commander, you're going to be dealing that twenty one commander damage really quickly. Same thing with ember cleave. So I think those work very well in uh, Voltron strategies. I would I would probably not run them outside of Ultron strategies. It's just like it's a lot of damage and it's very respectable, but I don't know. All these other ones have a lot more inherent utility that you can take advantage of, and this one is just like more damage. Look, oh. Seth, on the history of Commander Clash, all fifteen seasons, how many war pieces have you ever <clears throat> seen? 
I have not seen. I have not seen. Many, I don't think I've ever seen a war and peace. Does that right? mean that's when, Does that mean that's correct though? <laughs> well, we, let me I ask you so this. because we have a lot of aggro players and equipment players and stuff. I, I mean, was, yeah, I've, we've I've, played Voltron and aggro. I mean, if we're gonna go by the swords we see the most, that would be body and mind, and you know how I feel about that one. So for me, the correlation <laughs> between <laughs> commander like, class so, play is uh, not so wrong. What you're saying <laughs> is <laughs> a mark on our on our. <laughs> okay, no, so, no, so no, Seth no, thinks no. war and peace is the be- is an average sword, the best of the bad swords. I would say that. Okay, the best for of the me, bad. So we all Once have a in different future, best war and bad peace, swords. Body and mind are the bad ones. This would be the top yeah. of the bad ones for me. Yeah. I put this just above body and mind. Once in future is over it because at least it's so good much, in couple decks. So much slander right now. <laughs> this yeah, one isn't actively yeah. bad. Okay, it's it's okay. actually good. It does extra damage. It could do like five ish extra damage and gain you five life. Like that's that's respectable. But like no, it's, not. it's not it's not something I would put into a deck. <laughs> Like, Speaking of like, we if, got Sword if anyone... of Sinew. Or no, wait. Sinew and Steel. Uh, I don't know if this is a bad sword or not. I'm, I'm pretty close on this one. So this one is black and red. When you hit someone, destroy up to one target Planeswalker and up to one target Artifact. Yeah. That's, nah, I'm that's at least D. average. This one's a <laughs> solid what? C. This, like, half the time, it doesn't this is half repeatable a removal. <laughs> like... I mean, it's when not have you not bad. had an artifact to blow up? Like, well, there's like, always like, an artifact to blow up. What are you yeah. talking about? But how many of them? Yeah, when have do you, you? How many do you really want to blow up? Like, if you're just sniping <clears throat> someone's signet, anything. Like, is yeah. that really? Yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah, put some that's just like, I think that's a this negative, right? This you're just like you. this is worse you're than angering someone <laughs> who's by blowing up their signets and yeah. making an enemy for like minimal value. Well, what, what can they cast? What? They're they're tight on mana now because you keep blowing up all their mana <laughs> or, rocks. Or, or, or what spot removal are they going to try to do? They sure as hell can't use Blasphemous Act on you. So the like, protection colors are good. I will give it that. Like black right, and red like, are good protection colors. It's also it's also kind of notable that it does kill planeswalkers. Now planeswalkers aren't a very popular strategy in in commander. We know that like they they don't really scale well in multiplayer. However, yeah. if there is a meta game where there are super friends, swords are really bad because they require to do combat damage to players. So if you're attack, if you have to waste attacks to kill planeswalkers that's awful for any of these equipments and this one is a nice way of actually dealing with planeswalkers because you don't have to actually hit that player or anything you can go to the face get your triggers all all your combat triggers all your equipment triggers and still blow up planeswalkers so that's really good obviously outside of super friends and then in a meta like that with, with no with no super friends then you're only killing artifacts but i would argue everybody's running artifacts there's always something to blow up and sure, people will hate you for it, but like, whatever, be the problem. Yeah, that, that's worse than milling someone, YOLO, because <laughs> you've actively angered someone. Like, you can guarantee they're angry. You, you can, you're not sure if you mill someone if they have recursion or not. So you're slowing their you game plan really, as a, really instead of advancing their game plan. Value. It's it's negative value. You spent five mana. You took one mana what? off someone, and now they're on your back, and now they're <laughs> coming for you. <laughs> Like With that, what mana? You got them. Why you got them on the ropes? You spent five mana for the sword, Tober. You're actually probably <laughs> behind in tempo. <laughs> and the- well, I mean, I don't, I don't run most of these swords outside of like an equipment deck. Like I'm going to be casting it for free and equipping it for free and whatnot. So even I in equipment I mean, deck, though, do we do we play this? It's That's a C, by say. the way. I'm not, you- I'm not saying this is like an all star. This is a C. This is Did- like seven for me. So like. Even in equipment deck, would it make the cut? Like, I feel like if yeah. I was building a deck with swords, this is one of the swords that would not make the cut for me. Because, like, right most of the time, there's going to be no Planeswalker. Sure, if you were in a playgroup where you have a Super Friends player that you're playing against all the time, that's different. But in just a random pod, it's pretty unlikely there's going to be a bunch of multiple Planeswalkers on the battlefield to kill. And then I'm on the Richard camp with artifacts. Like, yeah, there's times when you're getting an important artifact that's actually relevant. But I don't want to just be picking off people's signets. It's much different than uh, the mill sword, body and mind, because you actually have to target something. You actually have to like point to someone and their permanent and be like, "I am coming after you." <laughs> so I think you're like really are just making enemies for for very little value, right? You gotta be. You gotta embrace it's... being the problem sometimes, Seth. You yeah, but if I'm gotta... gonna make myself the problem, it's not for sort of sinew and steel. I'm gonna play a consecrated <laughs> sphinx or like something that's legit. Yeah, not for this. It, it, it's also the only sword that can literally do nothing. So if someone like <laughs> Ondu inversions wipes the board and then you have you play this order to equip it, it has no abilities. There's no artifact to blow up, there's no planeswalker to blow up. Whereas every other sword can still 
do something theoretically. Um, so th this is a sword that has like half an ability most of the time. Most people don't play planeswalkers. And then sometimes it has no abilities. Like, what are you gonna do? Hit their hedron archive and they like crack it in response? <laughs> like, so I, it, it's, it's most situational. But in a super friends meta, th this is actually pretty sweet because you can this hit one person and then snipe a planeswalker from another person. Yeah. I mean, I just look at this like, yeah, sure, it may have exactly maybe one mode, but there's times where because it can just blow up an artifact, people will just hold. Which means, in a way, you've kind of taxed or slowed down an artifact's game plan, right? They held their best artifact. That's still a win. I, I, I think is it a win for better. five mana though? It's not like this thing came for you. I mean, five mana and a uh, card, right? <laughs> if you know anything from my commander clash, Seth and I, I've, I've proposed many deals. It's not because Seth and I like teaming up on clash. It's the fact that that we, there are artifact players, and artifact players do nonsense, <laughs> uh, right? Like, yeah. so sometimes... So when I'm not playing who... artifacts, you go for it because, oh, we're, we're uh, old <laughs> commander buddies because you know, this one was printed more recently. I remember that game, too. <laughs> look, 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 Every excuse to team up. Every excuse to team up. Turn fair, two, let's team like, up. But, but legitimately, artifact decks are always doing nonsense. That's so if true. you can tax... You, you can tax it an artifact deck. Tomer, you are an artifact player. You do agree, right? Like, like artifact Arno. players do busted things, if, right? If, if but you're an artifact still like, deck, this probably does nothing, actually, because it's not enough but I, to it, get but through it, them. It may not be enough, but let's just say that it gets their best piece or it slows them down <clears> from playing their best piece. I think there there is way more here in Sinew and Steel than there ever could be with War and Peace. And okay, it's got so, so of the more bad ones, you think it's the best one. Sinew and Steel is right. your. Your yeah, top of, no, of no. He said body of mine, swords. body of mine. No, 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 no. <laughs> See, I said bad swords. I don't know if uh, you know this, but I said bad swords, which means once in future war and peace, uh, sinew and steel. Like I think th of those three, sinew and steel is the best one of those three, and then it probably goes right into once in future and then war and peace. Okay. I mean. Uh, okay. I put this lower than Once in Future just because it's good. Like, Once in Future is very good for very specific decks. And this one's not very good in any deck. Like, I run an equipment because I can cast it for free and I can equip it for free in many different ways. And even then, it is most cuttable. But I really like having removal on my equipment. So that's what I value in my equipment deck. That's the only reason why I run it, really. But like it's very cuttable. So it's not very. Argentum it's not armor. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> I have, dude. Argentum I'll, I'll take armor. Anything over this. If we're Argentum talk armor is truth. Oh, I love it so much. All right. No one expects Next it. Up, light and shadow. So the black white sword. When you hit someone, you gain three life, and you may return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, D we're all Richard. Over the place on this one. What? D, I think it's a bad sword. Krim at C, mm. Seth and Tomer at B. I Ooh, mean, like, it's good sword. It's colorless recursion. Like some colors and decks really struggle with recursion. The life gain's a nice little bonus, but remember, we're in the sort of body and mind meta where we're aggressively milling our <laughs> opponent's decks. Being able to get back the creatures that people are milling offers a lot of value. But like, in, seriously though, like that's the selling point for me. Like, if I'm a deck that struggles with recursion and I have a lot of creatures. Being able to raise dead every turn is is not bad, and also again two decent protection colors with white and black Arguably being the some of the best, best right? Yeah, like Pro target probably removal the two colors. Best colors. <clears throat> For well, I don't think it's not great, but I think it's fine in a deck that wants equipment. I, it's one of the ones I still run in an equipment deck. Arguably, I want to say this, by the way, best two colors, right, for protection from spells, right, from removal, stuff like that. Not that good when it comes to combat. White's relevant in combat, I think. Black, maybe I, not as I much. I would say black green is probably the best for combat. White has a lot of go wide. Like, you can make a lot but of. Like, but, <clears throat> but they're small, right? Yeah. Like, you can usually yeah, go you, right you need past to hit them. To but you need to get around chump mode. blockers. Yeah. Sure. But, like, but like of that, like, you got to think about black having death touch, right? Green just having bigger and better creatures. Like, there's just, like, the. Black and green is probably the best combat colors, in my opinion. But I don't so, want to get chump block. Like I need to, I need to deal combat damage, or else I, I don't mean, get my my trigger. I think all of these are irrelevant. I think if you take my my sword <laughs> ranking and you just mix all the colors around, like it really doesn't matter. Because when you sit at a pod, like there's all kinds of players, and if you're trying to get a swords hit, you probably are not just relying on protection colors for the sword hit. 
So yes, it will matter in specific circumstances, but in general, if this was a red blue sore like I, I don't know if it makes any difference whatsoever to my ranking it's really the effect of when you hit um and i used to play the sword a lot it sucks because <laughs> people see your graveyard and they're like oh is there something scary in there then we are going to make sure this thing does not hit and if there's nothing useful in there they're like oh, whatever and you, you know, have to have stuff in your graveyard somehow uh it's game three life is kind of meh it's five mana i this is, get back a... this is the best of the bad swords, in my opinion. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> like, I, I rank it with the bad swords, and this probably Ooh, has some upside because you can get something really good back, but I don't know. You need something like <laughs> late game sword. Like you need something in the graveyard to reanimate, which is actually not as easy as it sounds. Especially you play with Farewell creatures and even, creatures even in die. a body and mind meta. I okay, but like if you get a spirited companion back, is that like what you're really <laughs> going after here? Right? If you're, run, if you're like running the, spirited companion, you probably want to get it back. Isn't that the ultimate Richard line? Like spirited companion, yeah. draw a card, blink it, it dies, get it uh, back, draw a card. Yeah. That sounds like my Richard's one, dream one, game. It, it is, <laughs> but would kill. you be ranking that strategy as a B? <laughs> like, well, wait, you wait, rank wait, it wait, as an S, the, so I mean, killing yes. spirited companion? For you. <laughs> like nobody's killing, unless you're blocking with it. That That's the only way yeah, you block with it. Like y'all you know, forget, I, it's five mana to get the sword on something, and you have to hit, you have to hit with a combat to get one trigger and usually it's not worth right you gotta hit multiple times to like actually make up for that it's not that easy to get the sword to go through this is the so first sword in the my question is do you play like tomer's a famous do you play a basic land or do you play sword of light and shadow <laughs> like, do you, like, like i that, i, really I actually asking, right? please don't cut i used for to play swords. this a lot as well <laughs> i used to play this a lot as well uh and you know richard is you know, as, as you put it into perspective, it is kind of like a, a card that I just slowly just stop playing, and I find myself playing Sinew and Steel more than Light and Shadow. <laughs> like, like what I'm not, I'm not saying like, like, for the body of mind player, though. <laughs> no, 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 like, like, I think Sinew and Steel in, in, like, maybe, maybe this is just, I have it C because I feel like this is exactly where Sinew and Steel sits in the power level for me. It's just, eh. Right, like, eh. See, but at least Sinew and Steel blows up artifacts, which is more prominent. And, and this is going to be dependent on the deck and the play style. I would rather blow up your stuff so you're not getting farther ahead. So I value that more than me getting a creature back, spending my turn, recasting it, doing all that other stuff. So I think mm -hmm. I value the removal side of Sinew and Steel more than I do Light and Shadow. But I could see the argument for it being better. So, But they're interchangeable to me. I think for me, I think that what I want out of swords is consistently being good, no matter what the matchup is, no matter what my deck is doing. Like, I always want to get value. That's why I'm ranking stuff like uh, Sinew and Steel, Body and Mind, Once in Future, very low for me. Because to me, yeah, the ceiling's pretty high. If you build the like exact right commander, you get the exact right situation, you're Snapcast during every turn, or you're a mill deck and you get to mill 10 and it's awesome. But those situations aren't going to come up. And that's for me where Sinew and Steel fails. Like, sure, if you're up against Super Friends in Urza, it's going to be the best sword. But most of the time, you're not going to be up against a Super Friends deck and a dedicated like hardcore artifact deck. So I would rather have the high floor of like, I sit in a random pod, I know I'm raising dead every turn with my sort of light and shadow, rather than like, oh my god, I'm playing Sinew and Steel, and it just like, it does nothing against any of these decks, why is it even my hand? Like, so, so I kind of want my swords to have a high floor and be good all the time, rather than like, have a high ceiling in like, super narrow circumstances or matchups. Yeah. But the like, okay, so we, we no talked about it. Though, right? <laughs> The the, but then you get the through thing life. we talked about a few podcasts ago, right, is that like I think when Mom or whatever All Is One came out, is that Microsynth Gardens, right? Like there's enough artifacts where maybe I try just playing that I, casually, right? Like it doesn't matter if I'm an artifact deck or not because I think Commander is just naturally loaded with so many artifacts. So it's not like I think the destruction of an artifact isn't as narrow as you think it is. But for me, like you're right, every deck's gonna have artifacts, but. Uh, for me, mana rocks are not counting. Like, I, I'm not... I don't want to be blowing up mana rocks. Like, uh, to me, I think that's a negative rather than a positive. So you got to have artifacts that are not just, oh, I'm playing a bunch of mana rocks. To me, that doesn't count mm -hmm. as, like, an upside necessarily because I think it can it can turn you into the arch enemy too quickly. So 
as as an equipment player, I got one of these as well in my deck. This is of the of the cards we've talked about so far, of the swords we talked about so far. This is the only one that I would actually not cut. Like the sinew and steel, I would I would definitely cut it if something comes along that pushes it out. But this is the first one that's like, all right, this this is a secure spot. Maybe it gets cut eventually, but like I think it's better than the other ones that we've discussed, at least for equipments, because it's not five to equip. It's it's significantly cheaper and there's synergies. And I think. I, I wouldn't run it in like a generic deck, but I think there's like maybe a couple other very specific decks that would run it. Like if I was a cleric sacrifice deck, like an aristocrat cleric deck, like Aura, um, the gain life is relevant. And the fact that I'm always going to be sacrificing my own creatures. So I'm always going to have targets for it makes it very appealing, uh, that I would consider running it for, put for that five mana investment. Um, but yeah, I, I want to put it in a generic deck just as like, oh, I want some value in my creature deck. But I, I think it's pretty good. I is like it good it, in it goes to your Soul hand, Sisters? Right? The, the creature doesn't go into play. It goes to the yeah, hand, so right. it's like draw a card, gain three life in like <laughs> optimal <laughs> scenario. You still have to. But like Soul Sisters creature. is like you. It's like a bunch of one drops. You have like your Sarah Ascendant. You have your uh, Soul Warden and the three other ones and the two drops and stuff like that. So like going back to your hand is not the worst. Look, I want to believe you guys. I I have I played Light and Shadow in Legacy. I played Light and Shadow in Modern. <laughs> Birds I are played very Light cheap. and Shadow in Commander for years, and it just got cut, man. Like it doesn't right. do anything half the time. You, like the ideal turn for a sword is turn three, because right. you you want to get as many hits in as possible and <clears throat> early before people deploy blockers and interaction and stuff like that. And uh, you just sit there and gain three life and are super sad. And, like you don't have anything to bring back and. It's, it's really hard to make use of. And best case scenario, it's like the slowest Phyrexian arena you've ever seen. So like, <laughs> I, uh, it I want it to work. I, I have like an OG foil original printing light and shadow. It's ready to be busted out anytime. OG <laughs> foil? Well, maybe I can trade you. Yeah. Okay. It is fair yeah, that it's... None of this it's, new art. I have like the terrible art. Like this, this terrible like ice cream... <laughs> popsicle cone <laughs> the new one's not that bad i think the no, new one's kind of cool one. but the old one is like terrible the oh but I, is really I like old border foils so. yeah. did we did we do this podcast just so you could flex your fancy card stomer you got some fancy yes. swords <laughs> i'm a budget commander by the way <laughs> the only th- okay. the only sword i have a fancy version of is body and mind so <laughs> of <Fair>. course <laughs> Okay, I, maybe I we finally <laughs> broke it into the good swords question mark Are weird we in the good because we yet? started with Truth. one Oh, Truth you're right. And shadow. No, wait. Truth and Justice. White and blue. When every equipped creature deals combat damage, put a plus one plus one counter uh, on a creature you control, then proliferate. This See, card is this very good in counter deck. Myself and Krim. Bees for Seth and Tomer. <laughs> like, I mean, this is like the most B ish short we've ever seen, right? Like, B is good in specific decks. It seems good if you're like a plus one plus one counter deck. Like it's built to yeah. be good in a plus one plus yeah. one counter deck. Outside of that, like I guess maybe if you're some weird like super friends deck that has a lot of creatures or like a charge counter deck or something, you can yeah. take advantage of the repeatable proliferate. But to me, it's like very poison ish. Poison. Yep. Is is it even good though? That's my question. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just I, gave I, it a C for the theoretical proliferate deck. But is this what you want to be running if you're running a proliferate deck? It gives I mean, when you creature mean, plus two plus pl- two plus one plus one counters essentially each time it attacks, and yeah. it enables proliferate. And proliferate just keeps getting better as we get more and more counters matter stuff. It just the yeah. the value of it keeps going up. Like it's now very good in poison. It's good in basically any plus one plus one counter deck, I believe. Uh, if you're like an experienced counter deck, it's probably good to super friends. I think. A lot of super friends make creature tokens as blockers. You could just uh, throw the sword on it and hit whatever uh, it has protection from, and you can get your loyalty counters that way. Like the the efficiency rate of it is pretty high. I think. I think repeatable I mean, repeatable proliferate actually is like pretty expensive. One shot proliferate is not that expensive, but if you look at cards that can repeatedly, you're looking at like Contagion class for a turn, Karn's Bastion for a turn. Uh, it's it's not a cheap ability to be able to do it is, every turn. It, so I actually like think a it's bird that's like two mana or something. When you thrumming bird, proliferate. yeah, yeah, but, but you, you want viral more. Drake, right? Like that, just pay four to proliferate. So like, you know what? On just off that, like. You know, you have a good point there. I am bumping it up to a B. Um, this is definitely a a solid sword to just like yeah, like the ability's nice. I mean, I play it in 
like proliferate decks, right? Like why wouldn't I? Like this and there's more counters every year on every set. There's just more things to proliferate. And, you know, giving the 1-1 one, one counter, you are attacking, right? Like you are mm-hmm. attacking, so that does change a little bit of the combat math. And in a deck that is attacking, why not give yourself plus 2 plus 2 already, right? And then on top of that, get a 1-1 one, one counter, two 1-1 one, one counters even. Like at the very least, your creature is going to be doing well in combat. So I actually think this sword is very much so a solid B. I'll Richard, I'll do we I'm get fine. you? Oh. Ugh, stay no, in a C. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I got, I got a C. It's like theoretically good in proliferate, but I'm not even sure it's good in proliferate. Would you, you wouldn't run these in like a proliferate deck? I, I think would it wouldn't you? be like the best card, but it would be we, very we gotta solid. We got to see all the proliferate cards, but right. it's kind of slow and janky for proliferate. <laughs> It's not as good as like I mean, Inexorable it, Tide or like the Ichor Moon, Gaunt- Moon Gauntlet or like yeah, so I, maybe I Throne of Gathers. I mean, card would actually, be a proliferate deck, and does this actually hop above that? Remember, yeah, you just take I, all I, I think this is better than Ichor Moon Gauntlet. Oh yeah, Gauntlet's I mean, only one, maybe not in, one permanent, right? right? Each, yeah, each that's spell, more like yeah. a combo card. Yeah. yeah, I I like just just this alone being equipped to a Thrumming Bird means that this Thrumming Bird is getting big real fast, yeah. right? Like, so and you get double the proliferate. Yeah, like obviously you get double the proliferate, but like oh, I throw because this that, on an Oko or something, I, you can't just staple it onto a good card and call it good. <laughs> I I will say I don't know if I just jam in any plus one plus one counter deck. I think that's a little bit more hit or miss. Like, would you play in just any deck with a plus one plus one counter theme? Probably. I I don't see yeah. why you wouldn't. Like, why not? Like anything with a plus one plus counter for the most part. Um, yeah, on average, you don't want we'll equipment. Love the <laughs> right the equipment are like but very. We'll huge. Have, so but you know, if, if it goes like, if it's like go wide, like call for backup, for example, is like go wide, put a counter on everything, and then you proliferate, yeah. and that's very nice. That's like, where it's going to be at its best. Yeah. yeah. Like you, if you, you have put no like, evasion, would you put the sword in and hope the protection lets you hit someone? Like it seems yeah. like a big risk. At least thrumming bird like flies and stuff like that, right? This one, it's a bit risky if you don't build around the fact that you're going into combat, and uh, yeah. So I don't know. I, I see. I mean. The next, the next sword, we all have it B, and I don't know if I want to put this in the same class. So let's talk about the next sword, which is Sword of Fire and Ice. Uh, pretty, maybe one of the most staply of swords because it's so old that we see a lot in Commander. Uh, red and blue. When you hit someone, you deal two damage to a creature or player, and you draw a card. We have it Bs across the board. Drawing an extra this, card this every is turn is, is always... Never bad. Never going to complain about building a Phyrexian Arena. The damage, though, is kind of meh. Like, is it relevant, actually? No. The you shock is someone's like, face. But it picks yeah. off utility yeah. creatures, yeah. right? Or, yeah, utility creatures, yeah. Like, that's where it I shines. Mean, this is one that's, like, trending downwards for me. Yeah. Uh, the, Like, I would, I think the value in, like, a proliferate sword and and, and getting the 1-1 counter is actually just better than blindly drawing a card. I, I, I'm in, in the current year, as things get better, that the more things you can proliferate, I think this is actually a sword that is now maybe under the, the blue, white truth and justice sword. It's still maybe just a a few steps ahead as of right now, but like, I think this card is actually trending downward for me. I would say it's trending, trending downward. I would say it's trending down too, but for a different reason. I think the reason it's trending down for me is Five years ago, ten years ago, some decks and colors were really hard up for card draw. And, like, this was, like, it's colorless, I draw an extra card. So it made it worth it in a lot of decks just on that reason. But as we've gotten so much more card draw and Wizards has fixed white and fixed green, it's kind of like Mind's Eye. Like, you just, most decks don't have to be that desperate anymore to play Sword of Fire and Ice is one of their card draw effects because there's better options. So it's trending down for me, too, but that's... That's more the reason is card advantage is not as hard to come by as it used to be. Yeah, right. especially in Commander. And, like, there's so many better ways to go about it than just having to pay three, pay two more, hope I have a creature, hope it connects. There's, I just don't feel like the upside of a shock. Like, uh, you look at, like, a few of the other stores we talked about having one mode. The shock is, you know, it's kind of like almost not a real thing. <laughs> uh, but maybe, if you have maybe, a if you have two toughness player. creature or something like that, and you're like, oh, you're starting oh, to sweat a little bit. It kills it kills wolf tokens for days. It kills wolf tokens. <laughs> <laughs> no, it kills fairies and rugs. You're, you're, it a, does you're kill a notorious Phyrexian arena hater. <clears throat> yeah, 
rank Sword of Fire Knights compared to Phyrexian Arena? Is this not five man of Phyrexian Arena? So I, I would not. I would not. I would not run Sword of Fire and Ice outside of an equipment deck. Like okay. I don't think. Like I. I agree that like. Back in the day, some people would be like, oh, I'm going to put sort of fire and ice in my mono white deck because it's 2011 and I just don't have a lot of options to support and I need to, I just need more card draw. So like valid, totally understand that. But like these days, I just think there's so many more synergistic options for any archetype and any color that you're just going to get so much more value, even generic options at this point, even like for white and stuff. Like there's like so many more cards that I would run for card draw if I need that. Um, that I'm not going to run it outside of an uh, equipment deck. And the only reason why I'm running an equipment deck is the synergies make it way better. So I would rate it much higher than Phyrexian Arena because synergy-wise, it's really good in equipments at the very least. So there's that. This and I'm never cutting it. all of my decks. <laughs> and it's it's being cut. Yep. It's being yeah. cut now. Like, even if I want card advantage, I don't even need... I'm like, give me the Mask of Memory, please. And then <laughs> give me, like, a real sword. Mask of Memory is so good. <laughs> We'll, we'll get to, but like I, I think Krim and Seth, like most of the time, the shock is a throwaway. Uh, yeah. yeah, sometimes you can pick something up, but most of the time it's just going to someone's face and then you spread the love because you don't want to anger anyone. Like it's like literally doing nothing. <laughs> and then yep. it's a five mana Phyrexian Arena, which I think is actually pretty good. Which is actually, like, it's, it's actually I, I, like worse it's than Phyrexian Arena, by the way. Yeah, it is worse than but Arena, like I'm willing to pay five mana for an Arena. Uh, I don't have to deal with the combat and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think it's also noteworthy to, really to say, though. Now it's, like, decent, and I think soon enough it will be bad. It just gives I think it's a couple more years. It's also I guess worth swords noting. are bad, though, so, yeah. like, you know, like, swords are, like, decent to, like, bad already, unless you're, like, a Voltron deck. I would so. argue against but that, I think like, they're when around. we get to our top tier of swords. <laughs> well, I'm, I, 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 I'll, I'm curious what you guys think when we get here. Also, all of these uh, benefit from Double Strike, by the way, because they're all combat triggers, so... There are yeah, ways of sure. getting even more value out of them. Like they're not just strictly like always going to be twenty and two wolves. Yeah. Oh <laughs> god! <It's pretty laughs> sick. Vol- Vol- Voltron, they work really well because you stack up your creature such that it can't be blocked, or it has trample, yes. or it has flying, or whatever. But in a generic deck, you might have trouble hitting with your sword. Like the protection yeah. colors may not be enough. Your your body may not be big enough. People might chump and stuff like that. So it's something well, to be cognizant of. And in a Voltron deck, you're probably playing a bunch of swords, and they kind of stack with each other because then you kind of build your own like commander's plate or something, where you end up having protection from pretty much all the colors and can get in all, all the attacks that you want. Yeah. All right. So the those were our B swords. They averaged out to a B. And uh, if you've been counting, those are seven swords we've done so far. So we're we're headed into our top three swords. Yes. Uh, so these are what we consider the cream of the crop. And we'll start with Hearth and Home. Protection, green, white. Uh, when you hit someone, search library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield under your control, and also uh, blink. Is it blink? Exile up to one creature, blink. return it immediately. Uh, blink, ramp. Ramp basic. We have I mean, B for Krim. Krim doesn't believe in the ramp. And then A's for everyone else. I, I love this card. This That's, is another one-sided sword, right? Or a one-mode sword for me. Seth, I feel like yes. the blink is good, right? The blink is good. That's why we like it. But Seth and I, I like ramp? we play a oh, silly yeah. amount of MDFCs. Oh, God. You're saying the ramp what doesn't am I... exist? <laughs> so you oh, won't like, have like, any oh, basics to fetch with this? You don't Dude, have, like, have five four, basics I have like in your basics. deck? I have two basics to three... Three in your two color decks? That, that, okay, enough. that's why it's a... a you but, yeah, twice, in, in a specific deck... Like even in a two color deck, actually, yeah. What? Because yeah, because in a two color deck, I am loaded to the max on MDFCs. <laughs> like I'm talking about even like McKinney Stampede. You I, know, like I'm playing them all. Why? Uh, so, <laughs> I have run, cons- like not even joking. Why are you running bad lands? If you could just because the, like the bad lands are like, oh well, what if I get some use out of them? But these are like really good cards. Like they they. <clears throat> Aren't they not enough reason for you to play enough basics to run them, like to utilize them? No, I mean, like I like, like I. You'd rather I, run McKinney Stampede <laughs> over another basic so you can sort it, of hurt than home. It, Yo, it, you're it, talking about my overrun right now. Oh That's my awesome. god! Okay, I, so, I, I love. I agree with them. I, I love it. Like maybe MDFCs you don't run McKinney too. Stampede, but you run Boseju. You run yeah. yeah. Right. There's like a Channel million lands. utilities lands you would run above basics. So normally you run like. 
three to four basics. And if you hit four times with the sword, well, you're out of luck, right? <laughs> like, you, you over-exceeded, and that's it. You're, you're not ramping anymore. <laughs> oh, that's boy. That's assuming I didn't even draw, because usually with my luck, I draw my basic, right? <laughs> so, uh, like, and so then it's like, really, I have, like, a sword, oh, like, animus was, or something, ramped once animus, and it's done. Yeah, like, that made me yeah, <laughs> with twice wear off it. these cards forever. Yeah, I just... I don't think they're missing out. You really got to build a around them. Yeah, there's so many good utility uh, utility lands. I think there are decks where you really build around the ramp aspect, but I will say that that has been a problem for me, like just running out of lands. And it really, I think in a two color deck, I'm going to have enough basics. But if I'm playing three or four colors, Pink. it is unlikely that I'm going to have enough basics to make this work. So I think that does kind of limit the number of homes it can go in. I still think it's very strong, though. And I still think the ramp mode in general is the strongest mode like sort of the animist is one of the most played equipments and this is mostly an upgraded version right so i think for most people this is a very strong sword it also the lane enters the battlefield untapped too so post combat it might be a little bit easier to cast out uh, another spell which I, mm -hmm. I i like a lot yeah. um and and the blink ability is just really good, right? Like, we can agree that, the like, if you're Wild in a blink deck or something like that, it's really solid. Uh, Spirit Companion gets blinked again. You, you draw another card. Um, I, it, it, it's really good in my Zedru deck, too, because it's, it's you blink a card, a creature that you own, not control. So if I gift, like, a Gilded Drake to somebody, uh, I can then blink the Gilded Drake onto my side of the battlefield, swap another thing. And it also combos with Aurelia, the war leader. If you attack with a creature with uh, Sword of Hearth and Home on it and Aurelia, you can blink the Aurelia, have an extra combat, blink the Aurelia, have an extra combat, and keep going over and over again. This is like the first card that like I'll run outside of equipment, outside of niche strategies. Like I'll just like jam it in like regular decks, and for most part, it's good. I'll, if it's four color, five color, I won't run it, but like one color, two color, three color, like I'm not feeling bad about putting it in the deck. And I don't even think it you got to be a blink deck. Mono color, yeah. yeah. Like most most decks are gonna have good ETB creatures. Like those are just kind of the heart, like Docksides and Sun Titans and Italies. Like most decks are accidentally gonna have those things. So I don't think you really got to build around. It's not like like you got to be Brago or something to take advantage of the blink. It's really strong. I, I, it is super I, awkward I though because normally you your about. line is like turn two companion. Turn three sword, turn four equip hit, and then you blink the companion and you take the sword. <laughs> Gotta off equip of it. again, yeah. Oh, well, you don't have to draw the card, right? <laughs> yeah, but, or, Tomer. Yeah, right. But like Harris, normally, Harris, like, Harris. You, <laughs> you don't have that many creatures, and oh, you yeah. end up blinking your sword. Okay, oh, yeah. okay. So that that terrible situation. You just ramped out another lane, though, so it's going to be easier for it to re, re equip yeah, yeah. the very least, I mean, and then play another good, creature. But it, it's. You know, there, there's some awkwardness with the blinking. It's not like the dream scenario where everyone has, like, Dockside sitting on the sideline and you have a flyer to come in and make a million mana. But You're not supposed to blink the, uh, the thing you're equipped with. You're supposed to blink something else. Well, yeah, ideally, but, again, but sometimes you don't you gotta... normally have, like, 50 creatures sitting around, yes. right? Like, especially since you care about the ramp, you're, you're, you really want to hit this on turn three and you want to start uh, hitting people. It's also one of the very few colorless ways to ramp lands. Uh, so that, in my books, puts it into the, the top tier where you play it in any deck. And, and play it in your Ulamog deck. If you're a Grixis yeah, or whatever, but... you should be trying to find some creatures to throw into to <laughs> pick up the sword so you can actually ramp and, yourself. Ooh, and some so basics. Okay, but, good. but if you yep. care about ramp in Colorless, then you just now play Realm Breaker, the, the world tree. Ugh, That's just better. Uh, <laughs> That's just better. Uh, it is just better. It, uh, no. But Gross. I mean... A well, I mean, you want a bunch of ramp spells, so I I, it doesn't have to be an either or. But yeah. Realm Breaker might be. Better, I mean, though, Realm Breaker is def. I I I think would just be better, and I've I've actually been enjoying that card by the way, uh, quite a bit. Uh, so, but yeah, like the Invasion Tree, by the way. Of course, it's the, the, the mill card. <laughs> I mean, yes. <clears throat> All right. So okay, I, here, here's yes. another similar sword. So Forge and Frontier, which is red green. Uh, you exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards this turn, and you may play an additional land this turn. So, kind of ramp, but it has to come from your hand or the top of your library. And uh, Krim, well, everyone gave it A. I gave it an S. So, I don't believe in giving equipment S's based on our criteria because I feel like 
Ugh, you power down any deck by not running this. It's just really hard for an equipment to meet that because some decks yeah. aren't going to have enough creatures to run it or whatever. But I will say this would be my number one sword for commander. Like if anything would get an S from me, this is as close as, as you could get. If I wasn't opposed to giving any any equipment an S tier ranking, this would be the one. It does exactly what you want. It draws cards and ramps. Like we've said many times, that's, that's the heart of commander. Those are the best things you can do in the format. And this does them both every single turn. So... I disagree with Seth. I think your deck is worse without this, and you should put creatures wow. in your deck just to enable this card. I disagree. Right? Ooh. Just I, like Teferi's Protection, you might be like, oh, should I run white to run Teferi's Protection? Right? And then you like just add a whole color to your deck just to play Teferi's Protection yeah. because it's that strong. Like, you need to look at this and be like, I can't ramp. I better play some cycling, dirtily one ones to equip this sword and hit people with. <laughs> Uh, so I, I actually think it is S. It's that strong wow. that you should well, be warping your deck to equip it. Especially if, if you're not green or white. You, you can't ramp normally. Uh, this allows you to ramp. And this is the perfect one because it allows you to ramp non-basics. You don't have to run these garbage basics. Uh, you can go full MDFCs. You can play additional <laughs> MDFCs. You can play it's your true. Poseidus. You can play your Field of the Deads and your Monocolor deck. You can... You can build a, a normal mana base and the sword will get you there as opposed to Hearth and Home where you need to start skewing uh, basics. So I actually think you should be warping your deck just to play this sword. I'm, I'm definitely lower on this card. Like, I think this is my second highest card. I would rank this number two. But, like, if you're saying, like, what what if you are in a, in a deck that can't ramp, like, what if you are in a deck that can ramp really well, though? Like, this is not always going to be your best card draw spell or your best ramp spell. It could be even, like, the 6 or, or 7, and then it's definitely cut-worthy, I think. But, like, it's just so good um, overall. It does the two things you want. It's not situational. It can fit into most decks. And I run it in, in a lot of my decks, even. Um, the only thing that it's not so good in is people say, yeah, well, you guys are saying that it's, like, uh, just card draw. Sometimes it's not card draw, though. Like, if you're, like, very heavy on, like, spells that are conditional, like counter magic, for example, or board wipes, or, like, stuff like that, you can whiff. Like, is or there will be situations where you don't have a land to put into play. So it's not like it's you're always getting that value in. Um, it's not it's not card draw. It's not draw two cards, right? Um, and ramp out a land. It's All right, so, so I got a question for Tormor, then. Would you take a Exile 2 trigger, or would you take a Sword of Fire Dice trigger to draw a card? Oh, the upside on this is much higher, so I would put this in. in I would pick this most times. Or I guess I guess we have surveil two as well. <laughs> There's a surveil two for once. Like rank, rank. Oh, no, well, obviously, card, card draw is better triggers. than surveil. Obviously, I think it goes card draw into exile into okay, or so impulse you take draw, draw one into over surveil. exile two. Um, it's close actually. Yeah, it depends on the deck. Like if my deck has a lot of spells that I will whiff on. Uh, like counter yeah. magic and whatnot, yeah, then yeah, or I have a, like a lot of removal and stuff. Then obviously it's not very good. But like, if I'm in a situation, if I'm in a deck that you know benefits from that, then yeah, for sure, I'll take this. Normally, I take Exile too. I think over the draw, Tomer's right that it does depend on the deck a little bit, and then some decks one's going to be better than the other. But like in a vacuum, I think I'd rather just see two cards. They're close <laughs> enough. <laughs> I, I think I, I, I want to see two cards, but it's like, I won't complain. It's close enough. <laughs> yeah, They're both both. I good definitely abilities. don't think this is S. As funny as that sounds, I do like I do like what the card does. It's very good. It's a very good sword. Uh, just be, But like Tomer had mentioned, sometimes it just feels bad when you're exiling the top card. And it's like, oh, cool. There's my you know, Teferi's protection off the top. So I, I got to use it now, right? Or or I don't use it again. So, or my counter spells or things like that. So I don't know, like, it, it depends on the type of deck, but on average, sure, this is pretty good. Being able to draw a card, play an additional land, like Richard had mentioned, doesn't force me to play basics, which I like. Because uh, in, in it just allows me to play a second land. So I think, I think Forge and Frontier is, like, really good. I'll just clarify. I don't care about the feels bad. I just where it can whiff. Like yeah, whiff. the the whiffs are bad, but like it also could feed into itself, right? Like in that, like yeah. oh, I need a land. I hit a land. I get to play another yeah, one. That's right? great. So so like it's it's solid because of that. I I think it's a very solid sword, much better than like you know home fire and ice and you know truth and justice and stuff like that. 
So yeah, like like this is this is the the colors has green, so that is pretty solid when it comes to combat. And red, another pretty decent. Like, Blasphemous Act is a, pr- yeah. a very like common card, right? Everybody plays Blasphemous Act, so it's nice to also get around that and like damage based things. Like if you play Blasphemous Act, then all the red. Uh, protection spells are now mm-hmm. or protection cards are are better i yeah. think a little Chain bit. Of reaction you can play like much this. Yeah. Bit. all right and then last card before we get to our final uh ordered ranking is sort of feast and famine an old sword uh black and green when you hit someone they discard a card and you untap all lands you control. I comes over has all the new ones. Don't you have the original <laughs> swords? Are you a new sword player? <laughs> so old borders are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but you should have got them when they were like five dollars if you're an OG Voltron player. <laughs> I actually I only made my equipment deck when Akiri came out, actually. So uh, uh Akiri Fearless Voyager. So that came out like pre like right before the pandemic or something. So I'm not actually an OG. Alright. So Tober's giving this an S, me and Krim A, Seth. B. Eh. It's high high <laughs> ceiling sword, right? This is double your mana if you take advantage well, of it. Well, well, it, like, it is it is double it, your mana. Think of it this way: we're we're high on hearth and home, and well, people who run basics are high on hearth and home, <laughs> and everybody's happy to put a land onto the bow, an extra land onto the battlefield, right? Because those are objectively good things. Ramp is objectively good. I like that. That's incremental value, and it's very good. And those are two of my other favorite swords. It would be two and three, basically, for me, of, of ten. This one, though, even, like, in a low situation where you have, like, four lanes out, this is ramping you four mana every single time you're swinging, right? You cast something pre- pre-combat main phase, and then you can cast another thing, four mana's worth of stuff, on your on your post combat main phase, the 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 amount of mana that you're generating that you can utilize of this is really high, like stupidly high. I barely even care about the discard. The discard is like completely incidental. The fact that like I'm generating five extra mana on turn four or turn five is like ridiculously good. It's so explosive. And then the fact that yes, it can combo with like aggravated and assault, whatever. Who who really cares about that? Um, it's this is just the amount of mana that this can utilize and how explosive your turns can be is why I put uh, Feast and Famine as like a solid S. Like this card, I will jam into a lot of decks if I want to, like in terms of like making the deck better in a generic sense, and I'll be really happy about it. Even though I stick with synergies and themes usually, so I don't. But like if I want to power up my decks, I usually just throw this in. I actually disagree with that. So it, the, the ceiling is very high, like Tomer said, <laughs> but you need to put this. In a high ceiling deck. If you put this in your dirtily deck, all you do is become arch enemy, mm-hmm. and then you die because your deck isn't powerful enough to handle being arch enemy. Like, oh my god, double the mana, and then you cast like a, a you know five mana two two or whatever, <laughs> and then people just start wailing on you, and, and you have no recourse. So it's actually like it's like preemptively playing like a KCI fairly, and everyone's like, what is that? And it's a little scary. They start beating you down. So in the right deck, this is extremely powerful if you use your mana. If you try to do fair things after doing it, you're going to die really quickly. Everyone's going to see you have double the mana. They're going to go after you, and then you're just going to die. So, Let me sell you on it. Let me sell you on it. Richard, <laughs> you're, you're, you, have a, you have a deck that's it's spirit, the companion dot deck. So every single, yeah. everything is like a two mana, one, one, ETB, blink, draw a card or whatever, yeah, yeah, get yeah, a land yeah. or whatever. So... You you put you put this on your spirit companion, your cutest little doggo. You hit somebody for three, so not that much damage. They discard one card, so oopsie yeah. daisy. Uh, you could smooth that over, you and then by the way, you, you untap all your lands, <laughs> and you drop down a bunch more spirit companions and stuff. You draw more cards and stuff. Isn't that not good? You just get to play more spirit you companions just, even you, faster. You, you put yourself in the pole position. At an early point in the game where you can't win. So everyone will just beat on you until you die. And then that'll be that. So it actually goes against Richard's way of playing. So I, I would never play this card. Because you, <laughs> you just explosive. basically like very slightly you. spring ahead of everyone to make yourself the target. You piss someone off because they discarded a card. And then you didn't really win. You're just like mildly ahead. <laughs> and then like that's it. And then, and then you die afterwards. So I actually would play any other sword above that. Where but I wouldn't another, use it is if I untap and combo off and, and you know end the game immediately. Then, then I put this in. 
Another complaint you've you've had though is like, is this worth five mana? I've spent five mana on blah blah yes. blah blah. This one is you spend five mana, you get your five mana back the same turn, and then you get to cast other things. Is that yes. not sexy? And you should win I the like game it. right there because I, you now have a target on your back. So yes, so I, I believe fine. if you can untap and win the game, yeah, you should play this or you know like be in a very commanding position. Uh, but I, if, you, if you aren't going to win the game, this is kind of like annoy everyone kind of like the the sinew and steel problem where you just annoy people and then they come after you without you actually furthering your game plan enough and people don't like having to discard that. the card would arguably be yep. better if that ability wasn't there and it just untapped your land <laughs> so you weren't like poking people and making them discard i have a much simpler way of evaluating these top three swords i think it seems like all of our rankings, discarding, you know, the body and mind thing, but like we more or less are in agreement that Hearth and Home, Feast and Famine, Forge and Frontier is like the top tier of uh, of the sword class. If you look at these three cards, Hearth and Home generates card advantage and ramps you. Forge and Frontier, card advantage ramps you. Feast and Famine, it just ramps you. So for me, I have it ranked third out of out of the the top tier of swords because it, it only does one of the two good things it, it just ramps you it's it well, there's like a, goal, the best of the ramper swords but, it, but but is there not a gulf between it ramps you and it ramps you all a lot like that's saying like i don't know dockside <laughs> is equivalent to a rampant growth because they both just ramp you right but this one literally finisher like you this is the card you throw down on turn five or something to like double your mana and win the game immediately, as opposed to on turn three trying to chip away and build up resources, which the other it, two swords are doing. It's a finisher, but it also skips you ahead a full turn, basically. You get to cast two turns worth of spells. That's how I see it. But if you don't have any cards in hand, what, draw what more you cast put more card more? draw. Put like more card draw on your deck. And fortune what are you doing? <laughs> like everyone very clearly sees your arch enemy as soon as you start doing this, though. Right? What are they doing about it? I'm going to yeah, be drawing more true. cards than them. I'm drawing double the amount of cards. I'm casting double well, the amount not, of spells. Because right? it's three Deals players it. with three times the mana. So even if you double your mana, they have three times the mana. And they have three Wait. times the combats. You'll I'll run pestilence, you know? I'll run pestilence. <laughs> and I'll just I'll dump all that extra mana into pestilence, keep killing all their creatures because that's protection from black. And then, oh, what are you going to do about it? You're going to attack me if your creatures don't exist anymore? Oh, that's so sad. Oh, I'm so sad for you. <laughs> and it's over dies to pestilence. <laughs> you need the light and shadow to gain some life. <laughs> okay, so what, what is our... Do we have a consensus... Number one sword. According to our ratings, it's Forge and Frontier. Do do we do we yes. buy that? I'm okay or with or that. do we like the high yeah. ceiling of Feast and Famine? Like Feast and Famine has the highest ceiling of any of these swords, right? I would I would rank Forge and Frontier number the infinite one. Combo, I guess. <laughs> I would I would rank Feast and Famine third, uh, hey. just because they like legitimately Feast and Famine. Like you had mentioned, it's just I I, I don't know it it's it's not what it once was. <laughs> I don't think I think uh, like for me, it, it's not like the ramp that I want. Right. Because like it, the deck that I'm going to be playing these swords in is just I, I, I'm i not going to need the deck draw go right because now. you don't cast on your turn. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I mean, but draw, but draw go. Why would I play a sword? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, also, well, I'm not talking about that rocks. It doesn't untap the mana rocks. Yeah, it doesn't tap my like, mana. Not, rocks, right. So like, you know, if, if you soul ring <laughs> signet into sword, you're like nothing <laughs> happened. And plus, how good is untapping the two lands that you have in every game, Krem? <laughs> so exactly. Not yeah, very right, good for right, you. Right. Yeah. Like, who cares, right? Like at that point. <laughs> I, I think that Forge and Frontier digging us deeper, you know, going into your deck, mm. and also, like, letting you play an additional land, if it is a land off the top, is really nice. And, again, the colors are pretty... The color protection's pretty great for combat. Uh, I, I, I like it for combat. And, yeah, so I would have Sword, uh, Feast and Famine third, um, and then Forge and Frontier second, and then obviously body and mind S plus. So <laughs> Oh, I thought we tricked Crib. I thought you forgot about his body. Yeah, we almost, <laughs> no, almost I, I got said, a real I said opinion. <laughs> no, no, no. Like that's that's not that that is a real opinion. Seth already said it. From the beginning, I could have solo put it cards better. Are, though, right? Below solo cards. Okay, sort of bad, bad cards out of the way, Tomer. You're you're, you're getting <laughs> like 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 that's Seth true. said it in the beginning. It, there is the other nine swords, and then a, and it's on its own in its own league. Sense yeah, I agree. Sense, and it's sort of body yeah. and mind. <laughs> yeah, there are the other nine swords. <laughs> and there's okay, sword and, and do we and believe any of these swords are truly S or A? Like, do you are looking? Are you looking for a number of creatures you're running to support a sword, or are you 
is there any criteria aside from like you know i'm not spell slinger and i have zero creatures like most decks will have some number of creatures like if you don't have flyers or something are you still running swords you also like, have I don't, commander. Un- unfortunately i think that they're that swords on their own unless whatever the sword does like let's just say hearth and home you're a, a brago deck like right like unless you're really in need of, of like a specific repeatable like a proliferate or a very niche ability i think most swords just aren't what you're playing like they're just not good enough in 2023 so example uh i i think that like as i said you know body and mind's the only one that i play because there's usually a benefit to me milling there's really a benefit to me milling or hearth and home the benefit of me blinking Right, like obviously, I treat that as a, a blink thing, a blink sword. Forge of Frontier is the only one that I think can actually be generically played, like along with with like body and mind. I mean, I so, think you, <laughs> uh, you do need a, a baseline number of creatures, right? Like, right, are, are right. you running a sword if you have eight creatures, Tomer or Richard, no. or like? But but you, most decks don't have eight, right? Like most decks will have a significant number of creatures. Right. Are you looking so obviously if you're playing Beyond some featureless the- deck, you don't play the sword, right? But okay. most decks will have enough creatures, but is any like you know, let's say your commander is two mana, is that good enough? Let's say your commander is like a two mana one three. <laughs> like is that good enough to carry your sword? Or are you looking for yeah. something more like evasion, I- trample, flying? whatever or you I, know, or is like spirited companion the sword goes in right? yeah i mean <laughs> i mean i think the only for me like forge and frontier would be the sword that would make the cut in generic decks and then hearth and home assuming i have enough basics to make the actual ramp work those would be the two those would be the two that i would consider jamming and just playing and you know putting on my spirit companion or whatever but like i i don't think you need to think through like oh i gotta have a flying creature or an unblockable you don't have to have you know invisible stalker to make a sword good or something like you can just throw it on whatever creature you got three opponents like that's part of the power of commander you can attack the person that doesn't have a blocker we see that all the time so it's really only those two swords that i think are good enough at this point that i would just jam in a random deck and then like the next tier is kind of like the i'm an equipment deck tier i'm a i'm a whatever voltage on deck tier where the swords are specifically good but i think for those two you don't really gotta overthink it like as long as you got enough creatures to theoretically have a body most of the time i think those two are are good enough in pretty much any deck all right i I remember that are are we still in agreement of the worst sword i guess we don't have an agreement the worst sword (laughs) is either once in future war and peace or sinew and steel no, body it's body and mind. mind. It's body, it's body and mind. Oh, yeah. no. oh, sorry, body <laughs> mind. I'm not, I forgot. Like, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll allow, like, Peace <laughs> and Famine to not be top of the thing, but I'm firm on the, the hey, lore. Me too. Tom, can you look at the spreadsheet? What's the group average? <laughs> on, uh, I call it shenanigans. Uh, I, I mean, I'm just I don't saying, know why you wait, give, give like, a, truth and justice a pass. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let me just, but you don't give body and mind a pass for the the building. There. Oh, it looks like the average changed somehow. It's still <laughs> lower than body and mind. Wait, stop, stop ruining the spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I still think War and Peace is just by, by leagues lower, like just the worst sword. It is the worst sword. War and Peace is just not good. Like everything that it does is not good. Its protection from its colors are so just not wor- I. I don't know. I, I feel like if you're just going to play War and Peace in the year where Commander has so many good cards, you may as well just not play it. Like, like just don't. Just put a basic. Okay, okay. Wow. okay. We got we to settle this. One. Wow. Rank the color protection. <laughs> What's the color protection tier list? I think <sighs> black, color protection tier list. Black, green on top? No, it no. has to be white. white. It has, it has to, to be, be white. white. Black, <laughs> black and white. No. Swords black, of Blasters is one of the most nope. played cards in Commander. Like, we just know that from EDA track, right? So... Yeah. Odds are, if somebody's uh, playing white at the table, they have a swords. I actually, th- I, I'm going to go with ahead and say Forge and Frontier, red and green. I mean, I just rank the colors by themselves. So, like, what, yeah, what are the, yeah. For, forge, so, so red, red and green red are and the green. best ones? I, I think wow. I would agree with Krim. I would go it is like, the best combat. It is the best combat colors. White and, white and black is great for spot removal and stuff like that. But in, in Voltron-y decks and things like that, you're coming packed and prepared for it. 
Like, usually I'm not too worried about, like, swords or, or whatever, right? Like, I'm worried about your creature sitting in front of me that's just going to be better because in green it, off, it often will be. I don't I care think. about the blockers. Like, it, it, like as long as I can get my damage through, who cares, right? Like, so they're all equal to that. I'm thinking, like, what other benefits does it have outside of getting around any chump blockers? Because who knows what you're going to be, like, like what, what your the actual creatures your opponents like, have. I've, I've never felt safe with the sword protecting my creature. Even, like, boots don't even protect my creature. People <laughs> can knock it off so yeah. you, Like, if they have removal, yeah. it's, like, generous gift. And, like, the, the sword is coming off if they so, need to. So I actually like red for the fact that like blasphemous act and things like exactly. that you live through like it, like incidentally right. you'll actually survive that and yes. green for the power to punch through blockers to actually get your sword trigger so i actually yep. kind of like that or you know, or do you choose the hard removal but, colors black and white but i go white red and white doesn't white also have like just a ton of bodies on the battlefield like sure maybe green has the big bodies but like don't, don't if you want to get in soon. sword hits <laughs> isn't like getting through all the one ones relevant i would put uh, white well, number one white number yeah, one and then blue is number five for sure <clears throat> like, I, I think blue like, is i'm also surprised that richard is like oh i don't care about people having target removal like we all saw the jeweled lotus it was glorious <laughs> like <laughs> like people well you're gonna get got <laughs> by two target removal sometimes and people do run swords like why wouldn't you, you not you should actually listen to me because out of everyone i have played the most swords i like every season of clash i have like the top sword usage and i've okay. played actually like most of these swords like light and shadow i played a lot most of the time, people don't care. Like when I equip Spirit of Companion, you can be like, "Well, you know, let me let me let me go for the throat." Like, no, like no one cares, right? They're either removing the sword, um, or that creature was gonna get killed before the sword got onto it. So I don't value this highly. And usually, when you have like sorted up everything, then they just wrath. So like it doesn't like the protection to me is kind of mediocre. Yeah. Whereas I like the idea of red because you just incidentally live through people's blasphemous acts. Uh, but <clears throat> yep. most of the time, if people want your creature dead, it's dying. Uh, usually they'll team up. Like one person will knock off the sword, the other person will kill the creature or whatever, right? There, there are many ways to get rid of stuff. So the protection aspect I don't put as highly. Whereas people will not go out of their way to make a colorless creature to block my green sworded thing up or whatever right so Solid, baby. I, I, don't know, like, I, I, I like i like the that little value as opposed to the protection like no one's gonna source the plowshares my sworded spirited companion like i'm not afraid of that i don't need to protect against that like and if i'm playing voltron like i have 80 million pieces of voltron equipment protecting my creature it's not as big of a deal so i don't know i, I feel the utility ones are better than protection ones for for the colors Honestly, honestly, though, does this even matter to <clears throat> to all of you? I know you mentioned earlier, Richard, yeah. like protections, like kind of a fringe <laughs> thing. That's kind of how I think yeah. of it. Like none of my rankings were based on like how good the protection is. Although I think like it's like a fringe upside, maybe like if it has good protection colors, that's a bonus. But my rankings would be exactly the if you randomize the protections on all these swords, my rankings would be exactly the same as it, as it is today. Like it wouldn't change anything. That, that uh, I, I think, you, not I think right? you, it is well, important. No, 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 no. It, it is <laughs> you can randomize it. Important. It really doesn't matter then. No, it is extremely important when when well, depending on the department. I the reason why I value the red and green is I had mentioned because of the combat, right? You need your swords to trigger. These are swords, right? They are they are attached to a body you need to connect to have it happen. So the protection is very relevant when you need this mostly just because of the evasion not so much the protection side of it like oh swords whatever right Let, let's yeah. ignore the spot removal right because richard said if the creature was going to die it's going to die right uh but but when you can connect that's how any of these things happen so you need to have a way around and that's why green being on a lot of creatures especially in a multicolored world right and then on top of that like red as well why not uh, the red more so damage basing but i think green is where you're going to look at a lot of creatures and then uh, yeah white has a lot of weenie creatures but if you all you're caring about triggering then just hit the person that isn't in white or doesn't have a white creature my i i agree with crim to an extent like i agree i uh, having evasion having protection is very relevant because you need your source to connect i just don't care <clears throat> what the two colors are in terms of that because i feel like I'm as long as I connect to somebody, I don't really care. Like I have to specifically hit the green player or the blue player or whatever. 
as long as I connect to someone, I get my value. I'm happy. Um, <laughs> and the other, th- the other thing is like, I don't agree with Richard. I like, I think, yes, if the entire t- group, uh, table teams up to like remove your creature, your creature will die. But if they don't have the answers and you're buying yourself precious time to get more in value before it gets removed, then I think that's, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, what's that? <coughs> so Blech. close. So I was very excited about this point. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I think white is actually really useful because that is the most common targeted removal there is. And I like that <clears throat> even if they drop <clears throat> later on, they still have to find a way to uh, remove the equipment or anything to actually kill the creature. And I like that. And then I actually like red a lot, just as Richard said, because you can actually build around it. My, my Calder deck uh, has three uh, red removal uh, board wipes. Because I have three protection from red swords. <coughs> so it's really good. And I have indestructibility and stuff too. So it's actually like I can make them into one-sided board wipes in my deck. So I really like that. And also it messes up my opponent's last one's axe too. So white and red, final answer. I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tomer is dying, Krim. Now it's time to bring home body and mind while he can't react. <laughs> I mean, like, All yeah, right. oh, body and mind is just the best sword. Though. But real, real, real question. I, I want to know what the listeners and subscribers think of body and mind. Give us, give us a number, one to ten, where you rank it. Is it on the bottom, like the bottom, you know, bottom at the ten? Is it Krim, top, top three, middle? I think it's middle, somewhere middle. Uh, what do you think? I'm actually curious what what people think about it. Seth sword of Cauldra versus Seth body. Does not mind. like body and mind. <laughs> That's horrible. It's so bad. It's an embarrassment to this iconic cycle that it even what? even it, exists. A, if you play a mill deck, there's actually a point to it. Whereas like War and Peace, there's like no point to it ever. I, again, it's more I damage. Think, what do you mean? If Milling? I play it just in a singleton format, has its value. Oh my god. Oh I, 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 I'm on the singleton value tree. <laughs> I, 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 I'm telling you, I'm scared every time Grim has a body mind. Now I start respecting it. <laughs> and it's the only sword that I, I have had someone attack me with a sword, and I've actually thought, like, hmm, should I just let this hit me? Does this actually further my game plan if I take this attack? It's the only time that's ever happened. It was the only so sword so I would play against. It's the least threatening sword, right? In your mind, so then it slides under the radar. <laughs> And people don't think about it, that and is, that means all of a sudden, oh wait, let me just ever, go tutor for. Oh wait, I don't have it. I, I played it. I played his rogue deck against um, with my Tashiro deck in Richmond, and he equipped it, and, and he wanted to attack me because I was in the lead at that point, and he couldn't because he knew that any milling would actually benefit my deck so much more than his like three damage. So he actually stopped attacking me from it. That's the only sword that he would be like, I can't not attack this person in that situation your Tashiro deck was very good right like and that that's fine I'm not gonna win that race because your deck is all removal though right so like hit you or not hit you your deck is all removal plus Tashiro so so like I don't think it mattered (laughs) at that point it wasn't sword or not (laughs) I can't waste my removal on one ones or whatever I, I think I figured it out. The theory is you play Sword of Body in Mind. As the rest of the table laughs at the Sword of Body in Mind, you sneak in and get them when they're when they're not prepared. Yes. That makes, get that makes sense. You do get them. Yeah. <laughs> Outside of like literally playing against someone who is like removal dot deck, like you're okay. And removal in the graveyard. Like we're talking like all you do is cast removal, Tomer. That is that. It was a graveyard deck. deck. There's many of them. It's There's a graveyard. Of no, us. no, 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 no. It's a graveyard. If it were just a bunch of creatures, I love it. I love it. Please, mill creatures. Let's play that game. <laughs> If I mill nothing but Doom Blades, <laughs> like that's bad. And if you can cast them again, what, if I was that's a Marin bad. deck, that would be better. And you mill my Fleshbag yeah, Marauder or something, play, and I just I start looping Marauders that. on you because for my cost of Caterpillars. Creature stuff you can do. You can do stuff again. All right. So th- this will conclude our Sword of Body and Mind podcast. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> the title. <laughs> And we convinced sort of anyone body of body and mind. I, I, I don't sword. know. I, I, actually, we can just look at EDH Shrek to see what the stats of the swords are. I'm actually curious. EDH Shrek, no, no. That just shows that Hi, there just, are people uh, that have opened their thing. mind's eye yet, okay? Richard is a cultured man. You see, he he understands. It may not I, be. I, it, it's. I don't think it's the I worst sword. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. Like, it's not the worst sword. So, yeah, Richard's a culture. I, 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 I don't do not think it's the worst sword. And I'm surprised you guys think it's the worst sword. But we've talked about that. We are done. Let us know. Sort of body mind. Give me a number from 1 to 10, audience, where it is. And we're going to average it out. Let us know if you're we're, cultured. We're, we're going to know if you're cultured or not. Okay. <laughs> Do you like your st- – anybody that doesn't like uh, – what closing thought on our way out? Anybody that doesn't like body and mind likes their steaks well done. Just saying. Peace. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> with ketchup. And any, yeah, uh, with ketchup and A1. Oh, my God. <laughs>